think we're good. Let me double check our um, audio and make sure we're good. Um, sorry about the delay there. Um, I was, yeah, I meant to start this stream a lot earlier than I did. But I always um, overestimate or underestimate uh, how much work it's going to take and overestimate <laughs> uh, how quick or my abilities in, uh, you know, getting uh, everything going quickly. So sorry about that. Oops. Um, we are not going to be playing any games today. I'm just going to be uh, sipping and chatting because um, there's, you know, there's a handful of things. We'll still pop over to the bar. I did get the uh, bar cam set up just for a, a quickie little flight. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, um, I don't know. We're, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a short stream today. Um, I mean, due to the delay and then, yeah, we're not, not playing anything. So, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, Ooh, I may have to fix audio at one point cause I didn't check it earlier, but it shouldn't take me more than two seconds. Um, yeah, I'll just do it right now. Um, so consider we're, we're going to be, uh, tasting. Hey Jess, uh, welcome. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back for a bit. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm a little Christmas up. Um, although I, I don't have a Christmas record back there right now. Uh, I, I did, but not anymore. I was, yeah, you know, listening to stuff I hadn't listened to in a minute. So, um, but yeah, uh, I am going to be tasting the spirits that I used in my aged eggnog video. Um, so, um, for those of you that don't know, give me one second. Okay, sorry, I forgot to add the updated mic to this uh, part of the stream. So, oops. Um, yeah, uh, so this video, uh, we are tasting the spirits that I uh, used in the eggnog. I'm not going to taste the eggnog itself right now unless, you know, I, I mean, I guess I could just <laughs> pour a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um I just, I mentioned in this video that I wanted to uh, do a stream sometime and taste them um, because I was originally going to do this in the video and I just realized, hey, this is, it's already a 26 and a half minute video and I also had to edit it like before I left for Thanksgiving and stuff. So I was just like, nah, I, I can't include that, but we have, you know, done our, our fair share of flights on stream. And so I thought, I've, I've thought that that was kind of, uh, I don't know, a good, a good way to, um, I don't know, uh, separate out this piece of, of the content into something a little bit, uh, you know, easier. So if you haven't seen this video, check it out. It was a fun one to make. Um, and it's a technically a part two, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not going to spoil all of it, but I did, I, I made Alden Brown's aged eggnog. Um, I aged some of it with like, not well spirits, but like the, the bottom shelf versions from each of these distilleries, um, over a year ago. And then, uh, I wanted to make something to compare it to. And so I made, um, another batch of aged eggnog with, the fancier spirits. Um, and so, yeah, today we're going to taste those. So let me pop back over to this camera really quick. Um, and the bar camera, it's been, I'll, you know, since the last, uh, meet in Skyrim stream, the, the finale, um, since I've had that set up. So bear with me if there are any issues. Um, 
go with yeah you know what we'll we'll just pop over there now um i already poured everything to, in the interest of saving time so um let me just uh pop over there And, of course, I need to make sure my audio is actually working over here. So we're going to turn up the sound, and you're going to hear me talking. <laughs> so, um, one second. The stream is almost caught up to where I am, and, yep, okay, we're good. Um, love to see it. Um, okay. Uh, so where do I want to start here? Um, I guess, I suppose, you know, and I might scooch some of these around because I can tell that this is probably off a little bit. Um, oh, oops, I forgot to pour one. You will have to give me one second. Um, if you'll notice, I don't have the, uh, uh, more bottom shelf Mount Gay here, and that is because I gave that bottle to my friend, but I saved myself a tiny little bit of it that I forgot to pour. So you'll have to give me one second to do that. And also this, I didn't get this bottle out. I'm a little behind, uh, if you will. Oops, and uh, I didn't think about <laughs> the spacing here. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, okay, let me grab some things. This is that, and you are right. Just the tiniest little. done cool sorry about that here we go um okay uh i think i'm gonna start with the one that is the most involved um that's what i mean by that i'm gonna start on the whiskey side just because there are three that you'll notice here um and uh I mean, the reason I am doing three rather than two here, because I only used these two in the eggnogs, but this one is their white dog or the spirit uh, before it goes into a barrel. So um, that is just like the, the raw distilled spirit that has no uh, age on it in, a, in terms of like, you know, barrel aging. So it's, uh, you know, there, it doesn't have any of the fun, caramely, toasty um, characteristics. There's still a tiny little bit of sweetness. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's for me, I think that white dog in spirits is always a good um, thing to taste alongside it to give you like a baseline of where the spirit came from. Because like this, you know, became both of these in some form or another, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, it is their mash number one, um, believed to be their their uh, low rye version. Um, and, yeah, so um, it's just a good thing to taste to... Uh, have a comparison to see what uh, barreling and bottling proof, uh, what influence that has on a spirit. Um, I think it's interesting. I hope you do too. So let's start there. Um, I will start. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to start with the white dog. And we're just going to kind of like work our way up and down this line a little bit so we can kind of get some comparisons. But I mean, the nose is like, really bready and alcohol forward because I think it, what it's like 62.5 percent so I think it's just about barrel proof um maybe a little less but still it's uh yeah that's a it's a hot 
Hot guy. Um, the palette is like an overwhelming like cornbread characteristic. Um, kind of like giving way to a like t a slight syrupy sweetness um, towards the tail, um, but still kind of maintains a bit of a cornmeal-y like aftertaste. Um, so the finish is like, um, yeah, it's dry corn with a little bit of rye going on, but um, for the most part, yeah. Um, I'm gonna I mean, the, the mouthfeel is like rounder than you would expect, but um, it quickly falls apart, which I am going to chalk up to the, uh, I'm gonna chalk that up to the like, you know, lack of um, structure that the, the barrel tends to provide to the spirit. Um, you know, there's no caramelization or, um, any of that happening so the the sugars don't have as much to hold on to if that makes sense um so working down the line over to the regular old buffalo trace um which comes in at 45 percent and isn't um aged as long as stag jr over there but definitely more than the white dog um and uh i mean on the nose it's like, uh, it reminds me of kettle corn. It's like a, a kettle corny sweetness, which is uh, fun and interesting. Um, yeah, kettle corn on the, on the palate. Um, it's, it's sweet, um, but there also is like a little hint of like orange zestiness at the the front but um it also kind of um i don't know it, it rolls back into uh you know just a familiar caramel corn like it, it it kind of transitions uh if you will at like across the palate from like a lighter kettle corn to more caramely but um yeah, uh, brown mouthfeel that kind of stays more intact than the white dog did. Um, yeah, the that I would say that finish is like uh, very warm and uh, toasted caramely, so um, friendly, delicious. Uh, Buffalo Trace has a tendency to get overhyped in like whiskey secondary markets and stuff because like. If you can get a bottle of it at retail, it's like on the low end, like 18 bucks, and on the high end, maybe 28. Um, but in any situation, it's it's not that crazy. It's um, you know, it, it's not made to be like a, a overly fancy uh, or I don't know. The secondary market, I've seen it sell for like upwards of 50 bucks, which is a little bit ridiculous i don't know that it's necessarily worth that um but yeah uh mm. after a little nosing i'm definitely picking up on a little bit more um like citrus so yeah that's fun um before i get to the stag jr my uh heater just turned on i'm sure you heard it i'm gonna go turn that off really quick i'll be right back <laughs> All right, that'll shut off momentarily. My bad. Um, so, hopping on over to the good old Stag Jr., which, in the eggnog, I, I don't know. Uh, on the one hand, I enjoyed using it, but uh, I definitely 
think that it's also not necessarily the right whiskey for the job. One, being barrel proof, I did account for that in, in the actual aged eggnog um, by you know reducing the volume of the, the whiskey that I put in, but I didn't compensate for that with anything else. Um, and it's definitely apparent in the eggnog that it's missing like a third of a cup of liquid. Uh, and what I mean by that is like the salt, um, like it, it tastes saltier because there wasn't as much liquid to dilute that salt. So it's, uh, there are, I don't know. I, I should have considered that. I did not, but, uh, yeah moving forward if i do barrel proofing i will be compensating by either adding a little more i don't want to add water because i the i know that's you know technically what would be correct but i think adding like i don't know some dairy product to it would be more appropriate to uh maintain that creaminess so yeah um this one is a a whopping 65 point, I think, point one. Yeah, 65.1 percent alcohol. So it's uh, it's definitely hotter. And if you're not used to barrel proof uh, whiskeys, it can be aggressive. But uh, there's also a lot more concentrated character or like wood, you know, flavors because it's not diluted. So you pick up on a lot more of those rich, oaky, caramely things. So um, I would say it's everything about this guy, but amplified. But let's actually taste it. Sorry, I'll quit waxing poetic about it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, kind of like how I said that one got into the caramel corn uh, towards the end. This is like already there on the nose. Um, so that's wild. Uh, real quick, I am going to uh, hide some spam in the chat. Oops, did not mean to do that. There we go, okay, oops. I hid them and then unhid them and hid them again. Um, awesome. Okay, back into this. Uh, I would like to taste it now. Yeah, definitely caramel corn, very rich um, sweetness, like super syrupy. Um, the, the citrus element of that one is still there, but it's a bolder, um, more complex citrus. Um, so I'm, it's like, I would call it like, candied blood orange like it's there's a lot of sweetness and like i don't know blood oranges are always like a little bit richer and um more intense than you know just a, a normie like navel orange um so that's in my head in my head that's how i quantify it blood orangey um um and a much much heavier mouthfeel um so yeah, uh, that finish though, it's like a rich candy sweetness. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful little whiskey. Um, I would like to at some point try just the regular George T. Stag, but um, you know, I, I can live with Stag Jr. for the time being because it's way cheaper. <laughs> um, yeah, it's harder to get though. I'm I'm just about out. I did use a lot of it for that eggnog, so um that's okay. Um what else? Okay, what can I say about you? Hmm. Yeah, having tasted them now, it's it's like super interesting because now my palate is sort of like accustomed to everything. So I'm gonna just run back through this lineup really quick. Um and we'll uh, we'll just you know see what we can find. Mm. 
Yeah, that that got way less um, aggressive, but it's still like uh, now I'm just really honed in on that corn bready, corn mealy um, flavor. That I I don't know how the barrel just like completely decimates that, but it does. So that's it's an interesting little tidbit. Um, and it's nice to see what, uh, you know, a few years in the barrel does to it. Mm. Yeah, those are nice. They are, uh, they're tasty. Whiskey was like the first, um, my first foray into, um, you know, tasting spirits more or less, um, or like that I really got into. Um, honestly, I think I actually, you know, I got into whiskey before I got into even like mead and beer. So that's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, I am going to pour myself some bubbly water to reset the palate here. Um, so I'm not just thinking about bourbon when I taste those. <laughs> Okay, give me one second. Oh, okay. Just a little bubbly water for in between. Kind of peel back all the stuff that's been coating my mouth. Um, okay, well, so that's the bourbon. Um, oh, geez. I see that my camera cut out. Awesome. Give me one second and I will fix that. This is happening. Very sorry about this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. Okay. We're good. <sighs> Well, we're back. Okay. Oh, and maybe not. Maybe yes. No. Yep. Yep. We're good. Okay. Oh, that sucked. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the uh, cognac that we used. Um, so as a quick little refresher. Yes, I am back. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Oh, there we go again. Okay, awesome. We might move this to the computer because I know you, oh, I'm back. Oh, guys, I don't know. We'll, I'm just gonna watch the monitor and we'll go oh, eh, ah, 
Nope. Okay. I'm going to watch the monitor. I'm going to try to just speed up this section so we're not, like, dealing with this uh, all day. So, yeah. Okay. Hennessy VS. That was the one I used on the other one. Um, let's see. Yeah. The VS, uh, much cheaper, aged for like two years. Um, nose, kind of raisiny, kind of must, musty, if you will. Um, yeah. The palette's like, uh, I mean, it's sweet, it's bright, kind of like a light brown sugar. Um, a slightly cloying, syrupy mouthfeel. Um, it is, you know, compared to those, much sweeter. Um, and uh, yeah, that the finish is like a lot of different dried fruits, but then it quickly dissipates. Um, so I don't know. There's there's not much else to say. It's a good one to to use in like cocktails and stuff. It's very inoffensive. Um, it's very simple. But this guy is one of my new friends, one of my new besties, the VSOP, um, which uh, is uh, aged for a minimum of four years. Um, but that nose, um, still kind of the same, you know, fruit and, and you know, uh, almost musty if you will characteristics but it's it's like richer and more complex so you can kind of pick out more stuff it's kind of like a dried date that you then dipped in caramel like it's a, it's a, a very uh uh rich smelling thing um and that uh oh hey thanks stereotypo um, the Nog content is, uh, you know, it's, it's one of my favorites, uh, to do every year. So I'm looking forward to doing it next year. Um, the palette on the, the Hennessy VSOP that we used in the aged eggnog this year, um, very rich, very sweet. Um, I would, I would call it like a, a demerara sugar kind of sweet. So like really, um, almost nutty, um, rich, and, uh, you know, a, a little more interesting than just, like, brown sugar. Um, then there's also, like, a, a plummy fruit characteristic, um, which, which I like. Um, the mouth feels definitely rounder, uh, edging, like, way closer to, like, syrupy. Um, I mean, that one is still, you know, slightly syrupy. This one is decidedly syrupy um and then it's just a real smooth finish very uh candy sweet and pleasant um so yeah it's good um hopefully the camera doesn't cut out again but we managed to, i think we made it through the cognac section without the uh camera dipping so that's that was good mm, that one is a tasty little treat um, okay, a little bubbly water, and on over to the Mount Gay section, the rum, which, you know, we all have, if you've seen the video, you know my thoughts on it. <laughs> um, the, uh, Mount Gay Eclipse is aged for, I mean, this, this particular iteration of the XO is aged in um, more, um, or it, there have been two iterations of the XO, uh, each like master blender when they are, you know, when, it, when a master blender is appointed at Mount Gay, they get to pick the recipe for the XO and all of their stuff for that matter. But um, the old one was, or had a much narrower like window for age statements that could go into the blend so it was i think it was something like nine to 15 years or something like that um but this one if i am remembering correctly 
Um, and I do have my notes, so I guess I can just look at it. Um, yeah, this one with the new Master Blender, um, the recipe, like, age statement window is now 5 to 17 years. So it's, like, a much wider uh, thing that they're pulling from. So they can pull, like, really nice but younger rums or, you know, really nice older ones and, and put them in together. So that's uh it they taste very different because of that like the the two different batches of xo um but you can't get the old one anymore uh on at least at like retail so uh we're making do with what we got <laughs> um but yeah um the nose is like much brighter um kind of an orange citrusy but uh, there's still like, there's more other like tropical fruits. It's almost coconutty. Um, there's definitely like, I mean, I would, it's, it's banana-y. That, that's what I would call it. Like a banana and coconut sort of um, vibe and like a toasted marshmallowy uh, hint on the nose, which is fun. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, always, I always pick up on just a tiny bit more burn and rum than uh, the other spirits. So I don't know if I'm weird or if that's, you know, how everybody is, but. Yeah, the palette is um, definitely like, you know, oak forward, but sweet, uh, very multifaceted and complex. Um, molassesy, I would say. Um, yeah. Uh, rather than like maple syrup, but like, yeah, just like rich molassesy. Um, any suggestions for things to try and drink in Colorado? Spirit Hounds, uh, single malt? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, well, I guess outside of spirits and into, um, I don't know, beers and stuff, uh, if that's what you're into. Odd 13 and Weldworks are two very excellent Colorado breweries uh, that you should check out. Odd 13 uh, does more like, I mean, I wouldn't call them traditional, but um, they do, uh, they stick to more like uh, a, a smaller window of things. So they just, they'll do like, you know, IPAs and like many different iterations on them. Uh, and then Weldworks does, like, they have, like, 60 things on tap at a time. Uh, and they definitely get very weird and experimental with things. Sometimes hits, sometimes misses. But they're they're fun. Um, so you can usually find them in liquor stores in Colorado. Um, but uh, I would always recommend for Odd 13, their brewery in Lafayette. And uh, for... Weldworks, their brewery in Greeley. So I don't know where you're at in Colorado, but those are good ones. Um, other spirits, I mean, there's like Abbott and Wallace uh, in Longmont. Um, there is also uh, a couple other ones. Um, uh, Old Elk. I think I want to say is the right name. Um, they're not like super huge standouts. Like the, the distilleries here aren't as popping as the, uh, the breweries, if you will. Um, um, and uh, yeah, Jess, uh, Colorado based means yes. Um, and, you know, I think there's... <laughs> I would love to like also start a meadery here. I think that would be fun, but it's it's like that's like a, a dream passion project someday. Um, mostly because there's a town here called Mead and there isn't a meadery there. <laughs> so I feel like that's a, a missed opportunity if uh, if if it doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, there there are a few. Um, I haven't been to any of the ones here, but. There are some. Uh, I definitely went to more of the ones in Wyoming when I lived there. So uh, shout out Great Untamed Meadery and uh, 
there's another one that I don't remember. What is it called? I'm going to figure it out really quick. And then I'm going to wrap up the rum and then we'll go to the computer and finish up with a couple thoughts over there. Um, uh, let's see. The other metery is Big Lost. That is what it's called. Um, they are located in somewhere. Gillette. They are in Gillette, Wyoming. Um, yes, of course, anytime. Stereotypo. Um, let's see. OK. Uh, wrapping up our rum section. Um, it's the mouthfeel is still round, but not quite as like you know thick as that. And I mean, even even next to these, I, w I would put the mouthfeel of this like more on par with like the Buffalo Trace versus the Stag Junior. Um, and ooh, Jess, the Braggy and Winter Warmer are are the two my two two of my faves from Grenfell. Definitely of their uh, their like normal needs. Um, yeah, I am on the last little dregs of my batch of Winter Warmer from last year, and I probably should have picked some more up, but. I didn't pick up this year's batch. Um, OK, well, that was good. Uh, let's, last but not least, taste the last tiny little bit of the Eclipse, uh, which was the much younger Mount Gay, um, which, yeah, was a two-year age statement uh, exclusively in American whiskey casks, whereas that one, they use a mix of American whiskey casks, um, uh, bourbon, and cognac barrels. So there's it's there's a whole like spread in that versus just American whiskey for this guy. Um, and if I had to really the the nose is much plainer. I guess I did this one out of order, but it's plainer. It's more um, like. I don't know. It's it's like you could call it bright, but like still not. Um, yeah, there's there's a little citrusy, orangey characteristic, but definitely a much uh, more more of a burn there. Um, the palate's like crisp, slightly sweet. Um, I like a light, light, light carameliness, um, but definitely still like an acetone presence, which, you know, we talked about in the, the eggnog video a little bit. Um, Jess, you are right on the dot with uh, Bragi reminding you of Vlot's meat, um, which is why I compared them in my video where I brewed it. <laughs> um, Let's see what else. Um, yeah, definitely lighter mouthfeel um, than the the EXO, and a, like an incredibly dry finish. Just soup, and it's gone. Oh, and uh, I cut out for several seconds there, and <laughs> I think that's our cue to. Uh, <laughs> take some of these with us back to the computer and uh, just do a little bit of chatting real quick. <laughs> so, whoopsies. Let's do that. Okay. I'm actually gonna unplug this, so uh, goodbye.
one second. Okay, we're here. <laughs> Sorry. That was a, a little bit of a delay. Um, but we're here. I just... Well, okay. I brought all of the uh, ones I used in the aged eggnog over here, but I brought them in just a wad of cups, and now I don't know which is which, so this will be fun to taste and see. And that is the bourbon. That is the cognac. That is the rum. Um, okay. Uh, haven't had much experience with cognac. Do you have a suggestion for a good place to start? Um, I mean, yeah, Hennessy is a good one. I am going to have to say that it's a good place to start. Um, I, I don't know. I definitely started with like the bottomest bottom shelf with like Christian brothers brandy. <laughs> um, not good. Uh, even just like Hennessy VS is a very good starting point and it's actually very you know cost friendly um and it's good to mix with stuff but then like their their vsop um a little more expensive but it's definitely um you know the the you're gaining a lot with uh, the price jump so it's good yeah no it's there's a reason that it uh you know has such a uh, storied history with the uh, the music industry, you know, and like uh, it gets referenced a lot, and it's you know, I think part of that is just because everybody else references it, but like it it is good. Um, so yeah, uh, that is a, a good place, you know, to start in my opinion. Um, okay, well, uh, part of what I wanted to talk about today um was just the the future of streams and stuff on this channel um and i guess so i i pulled i don't know if any if any of you voted in the poll that i did earlier this uh uh this week uh we're asked what kind of content people want more on this channel um and obviously, uh, the number one response is beverage recipes and reviews, um, which is like makes sense because that's, you know, where I where we started with this channel. So um, that's what people are subscribed, you know, for in a, a lot of instances. And that's like the, the content that has, you know, been the a, a attracting factor uh, to the channel. So. Um, I do, you know, like, I'm glad that, you know, that is the case, uh, because it's why I started all this to begin with. Um, and, uh, the other two, you know, sections got the least amount of, you know, engagement, the, the commentary and, and gaming options. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, the, uh, combination, uh, you know, people, people had, a lot to say about uh, using that um so um let me see oops oh okay sorry i'm i have like 10 tabs open while i'm like sorting out my thoughts and i just opened uh something on top of my stream stuff so i need i need to move some things around okay uh there we go. Okay. Um, Jess, I did see your comments on the uh, the actual uh, poll about <laughs> being Team Hodgepodge. Um, it's you know, it's uh, it was it's a good you know strategy in in some cases like just you know making whatever you want to make and then people will come or they won't um and that's kind of been my approach especially because i'm you know we're you know still a very small creator um so we can we can kind of just do whatever um so yeah um and yeah no i totally agree um that uh gaming content yeah 
gaming content being fine, but uh, a saturated market. I agree. Um, which is why I don't think I really want to do like, I don't know, just hopping on whatever trend or just doing an online game that's super competitive because I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> I am not, uh, uh, and uh, I don't know, the games I play are not games that really like have much of a, like, I mean, there's not the, the value of, I don't know, the, the games that I play is not uh, watching somebody like compete in something um, like Skyrim, which is obviously the, the one game I've played on this channel is just like, it's a, an easy, you know, it's an easy game to be good at. Uh, you know, Bethesda was very forgiving with their setup. So it's like, it it's almost just a, a fun avenue to just like do builds and pair quests with specific things um so i think that you know it was kind of like the the combination thing no matter what i do i i, I think i'm always gonna have kind of a, a combination um approach to everything um but I understand and like see some value in like um, having a space where people can just like, uh, or when they come to the channel, they see what they want to subscribe, or it, it's clear to them what they're subscribing for. Um, and so I think sometimes if it's just like, hey, I made this cocktail, now I'm playing Skyrim now I'm going to talk about pumpkin spice like, and now I'm going to talk about the super bowl and like stuff like that. It gets, even though I talked about the super bowl through the lens of, um, like, well, I, I talked about it mostly about sports betting, but also through the lens of like weird beverages that were marketed surrounding it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, where am I going with this? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I wanted to kind of think about how we want to, I don't know, chop this up or, or divvy it up or spread it out. Um, and like, yeah, I mean, we are a variety streamer, I, I suppose. I wouldn't say that, you know, streaming is necessarily like the focus, although it is probably, it's definitely the bulk of content I have out there because normal videos take forever to edit and they're very short. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. I think, I think I want to have kind of a, a variety approach, but still have, you know, sections so people can subscribe to the specific content that they want. Um, so like if somebody, you know, doesn't care and wants to be there for every little thing, then, you know, excellent. Awesome. Uh, but for the people who are like, I care about the, the like beverage stuff, but I do not care about watching you play Skyrim for the hundredth time. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't I I think like having some way of of concentrating on those things is like uh I don't know, helpful to like the the person who's like not sure and just wants to dip their toes in. They can like, you know, watch the video stuff or the the beverage stuff on this channel, but then I don't know, do like some of if if they're only there for that then they can just you know subscribe to that and be done but if not then they can uh, subscribe um to the other content elsewhere and so to start with that um i would like to uh, introduce uh the the new gaming channel um so we're gonna move the the game streams we're still gonna i'm still gonna approach it the exact same way um but we're just going to do the actual like game stuff over there um 
So let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, it, For growth purposes, it's important to consider uh, what rate uh, your output will be. Splitting your output into multiple channels may help with retention, but not necessarily growth. I agree. But at the same time, um, the in a way, the variety approach also can get in the way of, of growth in those capacities um, just because, uh, yeah, like people who are exclusively here for the beverage stuff, then, you know, if they see me stream Skyrim a million times, then they're like, well, I don't care about this, so goodbye. Um, and then ultimately, yeah, it, it uh, is difficult. But yeah, no, I, I think having, I mean, I really only upload like a normal video on this channel. I would say like, uh, like once a month, I would like to increase that, um, obviously, but you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not that straightforward. Um, but yeah, two channels I think is, is good, especially for the, the time being. I've thought about doing a third, but for the time being, I definitely think two is good. Um, we'll see, we'll see what, uh, what, how, how two goes. Um, but to, uh, I mean, the link is actually already in the description, but I will show you, uh, over here, um, as long as my, uh, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure my mic is still good. Um, this is the new channel, um, Quench Quest with Nick Tracy, um, I just wanted to make something that was like, um, I don't know, uh, still true to how we approach it, but also kind of its own thing. Um, so yeah, this one will be the, uh, the streaming, like definitely the, the game streaming stuff. So, you know, like, like this stream today, I would probably still do this kind of stuff on this channel. Cause it was a very beverage oriented, like just beverage oriented stream. And then also like announcement stuff, but like, uh, yeah, the, the other one quench quest, um, is yeah, more, uh, just focused on, on the game stuff. So like, it won't just be the, the, the lives and that's it. I actually kind of want to go back through and like take, I don't know, fun, interesting or funny clips from some of the older streams uh, from this channel and just upload them there as videos. Um, and then like countering that, I also want to clip out like the highlights of the tastings that I did on those 24 streams. And it is wild that it was <laughs> 24. Um, and just kind of break them out into the sections of um, the, yeah, like the, um, you know, I'll, I'll put like all of the Grenfell meads that I tasted or something like that into like a, a compilation video and put them on this channel of the, so I, it's like we can see all of those meads side by side, but I also didn't have to taste like 25 meads all at once because I would have died. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think it'd be fun to, uh, you know, go through and, and make some, uh, highlights of, of our, uh, characters progression in, in Skyrim that we, we played so far, but, uh, so obviously that, that this channel doesn't have any like actual posted videos right now. Um, but I did, you know, go through and just make a playlist on this channel of, like the the streams that we did on well okay i made a playlist on the quench quest channel of uh the streams that we did on this nick tracy channel um so just so that there's something there and if somebody you know stumbles across it or wants to watch something what before i actually you know go live there or do anything like that um that's an option. So, uh, 
it's there. I will feature it on like my channel and feature my channel on it when I can. Um, but you actually have to post a video before you can have um, that as an option. Um, so in, for the for the time being, um, I'm just relying on linking it in descriptions and stuff like that. But yeah, um, so uh, it will, I don't know, we'll, we'll do our streams there. Um, I have a good four streams planned um, for that one for uh to to taste some different i mean all all like holiday themed beers um but uh yeah doing that and then doing like holiday themed builds and quests in skyrim um and you know picking up with our character you know uh but in in i don't know in an interesting and like winter and holiday themed way so it's kind of fun um yeah i think uh i think this will be fun and i think uh it will be cool to or I, I hope that by having you know all of this concentrated over here um on on the quench quest channel um it will open up this nick tracy channel to be more focused on um you know the uh, beverage and commentary stuff that, uh, was, was more so, uh, I don't know, there is, is kind of what people initially are here for. Um, but if you want to see the game stuff, you can do that. Um, so I would definitely, uh, encourage you to go subscribe over there if you're, uh, if you want to keep up with the gaming stuff. Um, I may make a video, uh, on this channel that just, you know, like promotes Quench Quest, um, a little more directly rather than pairing it with like a aged eggnog spirit tasting video. Um, but yeah, uh, I also have another project that I'm working on that I have to be kind of, well, for the time being, I'm being like kind of tight lipped about, um, and I will post like a trailer for it. Um, it will, the, the project will technically be posted on this Nick Tracy channel. Um, but uh, it will be unlisted and it, I'm doing it for another like thing, another project. Um, and you won't be able to uh, see it at least initially, uh, without a, a few steps. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a fun project that, uh, I am kind of excited about. I'm like wrapping up a few things for it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty cool project to, uh, get to work on by a cool company. So it's definitely not like, <laughs> A sponsorship or anything it was is more of a uh, a labor of love because i i really you know think that the that company is doing a lot of very cool things um so i i will i'll keep my secrets for the time being but i'll post the trailer when uh when i can and then <laughs> i will uh yeah uh once once I do that, it will be more clear, and then I can talk about it a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it was a fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, uh, that is mostly it. We've got the Nick Tracy channel here for more of the beverage and commentary oriented stuff. Um, you know, I saw in the um, let's see. See if I can pull this up real quick. Yeah. Um, in the um, poll that somebody, or yeah, that we, that I did, um, we definitely had some responses. Like, you know, somebody 
you know, mention, always the butler said, maybe uh, I could do commentary videos on whatever topic I'm interested in, but also have a beverage to quickly review and then enjoy while commentating. And that is something that I actually did in um, sports betting app ads are weird. The uh, <laughs> uh, uh, thing I made around the Super Bowl about like just how weird, yeah, sports betting is app ads are um and then i also talked about how weird bud light next zero carb beer is um and uh some of their you know seltzers and stuff but uh yeah we we talked a lot about uh uh i talked a lot about bud light last year (laughs) um because yeah they you know they made the fall flannel pack, which is, you know, strange. Um, and nobody really wants to drink uh, toasted marshmallow or pumpkin spice eggnog. I don't, I mean, uh, not eggnog, uh, seltzer, like ever again. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a reason they didn't make it again this year. We'll just say that. I did see it on clearance at Walmart. <laughs> um, because they didn't sell it all last year. Uh and then yeah the then i tasted the the good the bad and the ugly sweater seltzer pack so um which i kind of maintain that the ugly sweater seltzers are better but i also i don't think they made them again this year i don't i didn't see them uh marketed so i don't think they did but like some of the ones in there were like really fine like uh i i think ginger snap that's it was a fine uh seltzer cranberries a normal seltzer um where they get weirder things like eggnog cherry cordial and peppermint patty but uh yeah those are those are kind of gross um and uh yeah then the medieval content renaissance that one uh i i reviewed to grenfell's um they're two mead, or well, same mead. Um, the uh, yeah, um, I compared their 2021 and 2022 batches of um, Buckland mead, um, because it was medieval themed, and so it, I was just wanted to talk about the Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, and the House of the Dragon. So, yeah, um, yeah, uh, uh oh yeah jess uh coming out of seasonal depression uh you know it it does for a little bit and then it it comes back which is not as fun um and i do have some thoughts that uh yeah um i don't know uh stereotypo uh enjoy um (laughs) help go help her stop playing mass effect um and yeah you know uh catch some of the streams over on quench quest um and we'll do that um and i'll see you there um but yeah uh i have some thoughts on uh seasonal depression and particularly surrounding the holidays that i think are a little novel and interesting so i will probably make another video um not in the same style as the uh, seasonal depression one because it's kind of a a, a a heavier video but um i will make something that uh yeah kind of approaches some ways i'm, I'm thinking about uh, approaching the holiday season um you know and you know i i hope people uh find it interesting but uh you know there are yeah i i can't i don't want to say too much because if i do then (laughs) i'm i'll give away the whole concept of the video but yeah um ooh, found some fresh juniper berries uh you know be sure you uh identify which actual juniper like plant it was uh because i think there are different varietals that are more or less toxic than others um but uh oh i'm actually i have it up here um I'm going to type in the chat really quick. Subscribe to me. 
and that's quench quest um i might make that channel a mod but um so that is the uh that's there's the the quench quest channel in the chat um yeah no it's uh it's awesome uh getting regular depression to become um or to to shake hands with seasonal depression and then be like oh cool thank you um glad you're here now um but ooh, yeah um okay well have i addressed everything i wanted to address in this stream i think so and I do have work tomorrow, and I would like to work out before I go to work tomorrow, so I might wrap up soon. Um, but, yes. Um, I hope you go subscribe to Quench Quest. Um, I think it'll be nice and somewhat cathartic to uh, have all of the gaming content in one central locale. Um and then let this channel focus on beverages and commentary. Um, eventually, I don't know. Eventually, I may separate those two concepts out. I don't know. We'll see. But I've thought about the concept of, you know, making this channel be more just the beverage stuff and then have... Um, yeah, the the commentary focused stuff stand on its own, um, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I think that those two like are more forgiving uh, in the overlap than like the the gaming and the live streams. I still maintain that beverages and gaming have a really nice overlap, but not everybody agrees with that. So trying to to cater to all here. Um, cool. Um, okay, whoops. I am going to, sorry, I'm trying to pin all sorts of things all over the place uh, while I do this. Okay, um, I think we're good. I'm going to pop back over to just chatting and, uh, you know, um, yeah, I don't know what more to say here other than these spirits were really tasty by themselves, and I, I think that makes them really tasty in the uh, aged eggnog. And actually, that's kind of my philosophy on uh, a lot of cocktail and mixology and stuff. Like, if it doesn't taste good by itself, um, you know, you can hide it with other stuff for sure, but like if it doesn't taste good by itself, there's an inherently limiting factor to your, anything you make with it. Um, so obviously there's a difference between like just mixing like vodka and Sprite or something like that versus like, you know, an aged eggnog or something like that. But like this was it. Yeah. The, I don't know. There's a time and a place for everything. Um, but if you're, you know, getting serious about like leveling up your mixology and stuff like that, then, you know, it's kind of a, a not direct, it's okay. It's a direct correlation in my opinion between like quality in versus quality out with, I mean, the, the caveat that there is a point where there are diminishing returns and it's, you know, everybody's, uh, individual, like, you know, MO to, uh, pick, uh, what, like, you actually, um, or what, what that point is for you, but, um, I, I think that for me, it's about, I mean, it's, as much as the Aged Agnog video focuses on, like, price and stuff like that, it is, to me, it's more about quality, there's sometimes correlation there, sometimes not, um, but yeah, if if there's not a, a good quality in this the things you're you're mixing with, you're not going to magically make something that's quality out of things that aren't quality. So um finding the the happy medium of like uh, you know, affordability, quality, and uh yeah, um just taste. 
So, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, my book over there is uh, opened... I said, I'm sorry, I I have this bad habit of responding to a comment um, without actually reading the comment. I know that that is like the, the better practice with streaming and I should do that and I don't and I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to start there, Jess. Uh, going to do a Skyrim eggnog stream. I had mentioned it as an idea a while ago and yes, that is is the Elder Scrolls cookbook recipe for, um, I mean, it's kind of like eggnog. It's sweet nog. Um, so I, I would like to do a stream um, where we make that or I make that ahead of time and then, like, upload a, a video or something uh, of that on stream or something like that. Um, I think that'd be cool. But, um, the, yeah, the, the ones that we have planned in the tank are, um, more, um, yeah, oriented around, like, uh, holiday, uh, like, prepackaged beverages. So, because there are a handful that I, that I got that I think are pretty interesting and want to talk about. So, but yes, I would... I, st I do think I would like to do that. And I mean, there's a reason I left it open on that page for, for the holiday season. So I am going to just uh, probably do that at some point. But um, yeah. Um, cool. Well, I don't, I'm sorry I don't have a uh, s calendar or, or schedule up for uh, streaming on Quench Quest. Um, mostly because I'm I'm like mulling over when I actually want to do that. But I would say at the I would say that the next stream you can just plan on that being next Wednesday. Um, and actually, you know, moving f forward, I would like my like main stream day to be Wednesday as opposed to Thursday. Um, I just think that like, yeah, I mean, I work from home on Thursdays. Um, so I think that's more of a good day for like planning the next week thing, <laughs> uh, rather than like scrambling for the, I don't know, actual stream. I don't know. I, I kind of like that. And it also means we can stay up later on the stream if we want to. Um, cause I don't have to drive to work <laughs> like the next morning, like really early. Um, because I can just stay at my house. So, I don't know. I think we might shift over to Wednesdays instead. Um, so, uh, but, so, Wednesday, I might stream again on Thursday, the next day, just for practicality, because there are a number of streams I want to do. So, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I will try to do a handful of streams. And, uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be fun. Um we'll we'll call it uh four to five streams this month, uh excluding this one. So yeah, we'll we'll keep it lively. Um cool. Well this has been fun. Um it's a little later than I wanted to wanted to be doing this, but eh, I'm oh well. Setup. It takes longer than you think. Um Cool. Hey, I'm glad that it works out for your schedule uh, just as uh, good as mine. Uh, so, cool. Um, awesome. Well, with that, I am going to um, clean up and go to bed. So I will see you next Wednesday for that stream. Um, and until then, what do I want to cheers with? Um, you know what? In honor of the uh, eggnog video and the the importance of the rum, we'll cheers with that. So, um, cheers, and I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>